Hi, everybody. You've probably been used to us talking very often about quite esoteric devices, picks, Arduinos and the like for enhancing motor railways. Today, we're going to step back a bit te in technology, and this is the the original solid state device, the uh, the humble hinge, but nevertheless, it uh, it punches above its weight. So let's take a look at how we can use the uh, the hinge to improve our layouts. I would like to think that you all have a much better layout than this, but this uh, humble six by four is fine for demonstrating some of the problems that, that many people have with uh, with layouts. Um, we all would like to maximize the size of the layout we have, depending on how much uh, room we've got. But one of the problems is we always have need for access. And even this, this simple six by four, there's still a need to get around all four sides at some time to do some basic maintenance. But this demonstrates some of the, the problems that these layouts have. And that because we want to get as much track on the board as possible, we end up with a track far too close to the edges, as you see here. So this results in there not being any scenery at the edges. Um, at best, our layouts have low profile buildings or the, the ubiquitous Pico back scene. But that really adds up to a layout which is unrealistic. It's, uh, it's not very interesting. It's not something you'd probably want to spend too much time on. It's a train set. It's, it's not a model railway. But we can do much better than that. Let's see how you can do that. So we look at how we can use space in a much more effective way. If you think of the, the blue rectangle as being the, the boundary of the room that you have the layout in, they are the walls. The layout is bang in the middle. And X marks the spot where you want to sit and control it. At some point, you will need to have occasional access all around that layout. If you happen to need access because, let's say, in the, in the top corner, you have manually operated points, then you do have a problem. We all know how we can avoid that. So that isn't a good enough reason to need uh, access. Uh, also, if you have constant derailments, they can be easily fixed. So generally, there's no reason why you should have to have access all the time to at least three sides of that uh, layout. So let's look at using the space on the three sides. Straight away, we can see an opportunity. Three sides, we can fill that space with scenery, whatever you wish. But how do we achieve this without losing the access that we do need periodically? We look at a very simple device. So this is the, the hinged table. Um, that is a commercial hinge table, typically from a, a kitchen. It's a great space saver. That's what we want to use on our layouts. Very simple construction with a suitable support. Doesn't need to be as heavy as that. That's supporting a kitchen table. Um, you can use a much lighter support for the sort of scenery that we're looking at. Also choose sensible dimensions we need to be able to handle these sections of scenery. So don't go overboard on the size. If you have a long layout, then split the long lengths into smaller ones. They actually work better that way. They're easy to handle. In terms of the construction, recommendation would be to use a softwood frame with either MDF or plywood top, which reduces the weight and the framework can be used to conceal and protect any electrical wiring that you might be using. So let's look at some of the benefits of having hinged scenery. Now this small piece of scenery you can see in front of you, uh, that's actually where I'm sitting at the moment. That's at my desk in my study. Now that small board is 24 inches by 12 inches in length. Uh, it's got quite a bit packed into it. It has um, random lights kits. 
in both of those terrace buildings. The church has lights, the vehicles have lights. And if you look very closely into the right hand corner of it, that's the, the police car that we were looking at a few weeks back. And that has a uh, twin flash unit. So there's quite a bit that can be packed under there. One of those boards and the others that uh, go along with it have allowed me to maximize the available area. I can have far more scenery than I otherwise would have been able to do. I think you'll agree it provides more realism in that you have substantial scenery at the edge of the board. You don't have the track at the edge of the board. Still allows you to retain access, which is vital. Plus the fact you can build it at your workbench. Could you imagine having to build some of this or the subsequent modules that I'll be showing you in situ? Very, very difficult to put any level of detail, especially wiring uh, when you're having to do it directly onto a layout. Of course, you can add lights, animation, sound, any of the effects that we've discussed over time and much easier to do it at your workbench than on the layout. Very, very simple to wire. All you have to do with this one is to tip the board on its edge, clamp it firmly, and you can work at the back of the layout without working underneath the layout and having solder dropping in your eyes. It's removable, as you can see here. And the advantage of that is it's also upgradable. And that's the reason it happens to be sitting on the bench there. I was adding street lights, lights to the vehicles and that little uh, police car cameo. So it's very, very versatile. So that's a small, small scale um, addition, small scale piece of hinge scenery. Let's look at some bigger examples for those who are a bit more adventurous. This one is about six by one. Uh, on the left-hand side, you'll see, I should be able to make out two long lengths of track, station platform on the side. And the flip side here is the frame that I was talking about. Simple wooden frame, braced for a bit of strength, but it's still fairly light. Um, MDF top, and you can see the, the wiring, which is safe and secure within the, the framework. And I'll show you how to protect that further a little later on. Now this layer includes two shuttle kits. It has uh, two LDR TOTI kits, two steam sound kits. Let's add it to the layout. And there we go, that's added to my layout. And if I flick the hinges down, that gives you an example of how much space that you can uh, get back. Okay, there it's up and there it's down. And that allows me to get to the scenery on the right hand side of those tracks. Let's have a look at it working. It's the LDR Totti. Engages the steam sound. Two independent tracks, so here's the second one coming in. And that will continue all day long because it's automated with a PMP kit. Let's look at something slightly different now. Again, this is a six by one and it's part of several that I use for the entire back scene of the layout, which has a total length of about 16 feet. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side, you'll get an idea of the, the plan of it. Again, this statue here is here on this figure, uh, on this uh, image. And you'll see one, two, three blocks of buildings. One, two, three. In the background, we've got three more. Uh, I'll come back to this second photo later. So here on the left, we have eight random lights kits. We've got two traffic lights kits. 
got three twin flashes. They operate the Belisha beacons. And at least 183 millimeter LEDs. I put that detail there just to stress the point that this would be one a heck of a task to try and build directly onto a layout. Uh, I, for one, wouldn't fancy crawling around underneath trying to wire this one up. But in the comfort of my own study, no difficulty whatsoever. I forgot to include the microlit sleds for the vehicles. And of course, you can take that board off any time you want and uh, make upgrades to it. What I tend to do is that I arrange common wiring groups for buildings, traffic lights, Belisha Beacon crossings and the vehicles. And the reason for that is that I have two connector blocks on each piece of scenery. One is for daytime and the other is for night. And by that, for the, the daytime, the traffic lights and the crossings would be wired up for daytime operation. One flick of the switch. And with the second flick of the switch, I can bring on the building lights and the, and the vehicles. So two switches, and you've got day and night. And finally, going back to the second photograph, the, the back of the board and all that wiring is protected by simple gray board. And for those of you not familiar, it's just very cheap, thick card. It's light, it's durable, and it protects the wiring. Let's look at the board in test mode when it was still in my study. There we go. I know a truck kept going through red lights, but that's the way we drive down in here. <laughs> now, this shows the actual fitting of the of the uh, scenic boards, and as you can see, it comes right under the the eaves of the roof. Uh, so if it wasn't hinged, then I couldn't have that uh, scenery. 
And the one board that is missing is the one that was actually sitting on my workbench. And that will go precisely where I'm taking that photograph from now. So the entire length is about 16 feet or so. That's it when it's hinged down. So that gives me the access I need to get past and uh, maintain the track. So there you see it, there you don't. And finally, let's take a short train ride past the whole of the back scenery. None of that scenery would have been possible on the layout, but for the hinges. And just as a, a final piece, you might recall a few weeks back, Davy and Chick did an excellent presentation on how to film your layouts. Um, this is one of the, the cameras I used to film on, on my layout. Apart from the, the digital camera for the, the main shots, I used this small cycle helmet camera, a movie camera mounted on uh, wheels and as you can see a very elegant uh, piece of wood. Those who are familiar with the camera will recognize that it's actually upside down. And the reason it's upside down is that the lens here I've mounted um, upside down up so it's at the bottom to get a pedestrian's eye view for going through those street scenes between the buildings. If the camera is used the, the correct way up then I would get the view from a double-decker bus. However, it does mean the view is upside down, but, and this is a tip that you might want to use, Windows has a neat little uh, inversion tool using Windows, uh, using video editor. Uh, and so I hope this has given you some food for thought. And if it has, then we look forward to seeing the output of uh, your efforts on some new videos.